So there are two fields that are really important to, to get under your fingers when you're learning to improvise. Uh, the first one is a, a triplet feel, and I've spoken about that in previous videos, so check my link out of there. And the other one is just straight 16th notes, sort of mid-tempo straight 16th notes. And for some reason, when I was first learning to improvise, this was probably the one that I struggled with more than the other one, actually. And, and the, the trick for this, or the, the, the skill for me, was to just be able to sustain, you know, that patter of 16th notes all the way through, be able to maintain it and be able to improvise with it. And that's what I thought I'd focus on this week. So what I've done is I've created a couple of very simple lines that you can run through yourself, and I'll talk about those in the moment. And I've uh, created a little PDF as well, so you can download that, and that's got the tabs for the lines on there as well. So I'll play through those. The idea of those really is to, is to give you some fundamental units that you can play with, some little, little licks, little ideas that you can start to connect together, that you can start to snake together, if you like, and move them around the neck. And that's where I want you to get to with this as well. And in order to help you out with that as well, I've created a, a whole set of backing tracks, some very simple backing tracks, just a drum beat over a, an E root note at different tempos, starting at 75 beats a minute all the way up to 120 beats a minute. Uh, and these, these give you something to sort of play again, something to just sort of... Uh, you know, develop your skills, something a bit different to a metronome, to be honest with you as well. So by all means, check those out. And at the end of the video, I'll, I'll stick a few seconds of me playing against these as well, so you can hear them. But anyway, let's start with the licks. Okay, so the first set of patterns I'm going to talk about are just descending and ascending groups of four. So it's really worth getting this under your fingers in every position going up and down the neck. I'll just stick in the one position. And the ascending uh, version of this, there's a useful little trick to be aware of, especially around these middle strings, and, and it's useful elsewhere as well. So if you look at what I'm doing, I'm using my third finger and then when I reset for the next, I reset with my second finger, and that's the trick. See that? And that's a really useful way of getting around having to do that finger roll. So it's well worth understanding, well worth recognizing that that's going on. So that's the first pattern. The second pattern is just this one. And going back, I've just reversed it. Again, get these under your fingers, get them under your fingers in every position. And then start playing around with them. See if you can... See if you can start to alternate between one set of patterns and the other, yeah? Yeah? So that's the second pattern. And, and the other thing to be aware of is, is changing, changing the emphasis or starting this in a different, different part of the beat. So you could start, um, it's hard for me to demonstrate here without a, without a pulse, but one, 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 one. Same pattern, but because I'm emphasizing that second note rather than the first note, or I'm landing that on the downbeat, you get quite a different sound. So that's worth playing with as well. The, the other thing to, to play around with when you're working with straight fours is syncopation. And a, and a pattern you hear all the time is mixing 
groups of three notes with a group of four notes. And the really, really common one is to play four groups of three notes or four triplet lines and then a group of four notes like this. Yeah. And of course you can do... You can just start moving them around. Yep. Yeah. Or... Uh, just playing around with that idea, getting, getting the syncopation, understanding how the syncopation works. And of course, once you've got all of that going, just start to freestyle. Just see if you can move it around the neck a little bit like that. And that's when the fun really starts. So some very simple ideas there, but something that you can start to stitch together. You can add your own ideas to it and you can take it for a journey, walk it up and down the neck as you want to as well. The links to all the backing tracks I'll stick in the description field below. So, so just go and check those out, go and try those out yourself and just see how far you can get with them. See if you can get up to 120 beats a minute, see how comfortable you can feel at that kind of pace as well. So that's it for this week. I'll give it a go myself. See you next time.